yeah hi guys um very good morning all of you i uh, hope all of you can hear me uh, anyone guys can you please confirm uh, is a model guys uh, yes sir you right. cannot do. i yes. can hear you yeah is my voice is clear or uh, are you getting any disturbance or anything like that is no it no clear? it's a very clear it's very clear okay fine so right so guys um uh, yeah so let me introduce myself uh, this is uh, i am vamshi krishna here guys uh, i was a trainer for uh, power bi so uh, my main specialization uh, this is my first interactive session guys so let me just say i don't want to take more time uh, just like a, a quickly uh, just a two minutes i don't want to take more than that just give me a second guys okay so guys uh, yeah so this is uh, vamshi krishna here guys so i was the trainer for power bi uh, my main specialization is uh, my main subject is data science guys so i was an expertise in data science almost all from the last 7 years uh, i was into the training and all the related programs related to data science ai machine learning uh whatever the currently uh, whatever that is in the huge demand uh, currently generative ai so i was an uh, expertise in this particular areas and uh, as a um, as a data science expert so i was also experienced on one of the skill called as data visualization so about that um, today whatever we are here we are here to learn about power bi here so power bi is nothing but we all of you know that it's an um, nowadays everyone came to know about these guys so it's not that um, nobody knows about that almost all everyone came to know about what is power bi so being i was an expertise in one of the um, data visualization is one of the expertise in the data science so i was able to deliver i can deliver even this particular program uh, which is nothing but it's a power bi guys so today is our first interaction um, uh, it's an introduction class also actually very few people also join for today only i think four i can see but generally uh, 1 2 3 4 only four generally we'll have 20 plus students are there we'll see when a couple of days they may join so coming to power bi guys so power bi is nothing but we all of you know that so first of all let us before going to that uh, let me uh, just ask you some few questions what do you know about power bi uh, anyone from your side guys i just want to hear some few points from your side uh, what do you know about power bi guys anyone from your side just what do you know about power bi uh power bi is a visualization tool okay uh, it's nothing which, but it's a yeah. data visualization tool okay fine okay fine go ahead yes. mm -hmm. uh, and when we receive a raw data from mm. the multiple sources mm -hmm. and to uh, uh, so power bi helps to uh, clean the data and mm -hmm. build a visualization mm -hmm. to uh, take a decision mm -hmm. uh, according to business growth okay fine okay so it's absolutely a clear picture Yes, yes, absolutely. It is going to be the same points. Guys, let me convert into a, just like an a technical uh, terminologies. So, Power BI is a data visualization tool, guys. Okay, who developed it, guys? Which company developed this Power BI? Microsoft. Microsoft. Okay, it is a Microsoft data visualization software or Microsoft data visualization tool. So, what it can do? Generally, a tool or a software can perform some operations, right? so what it can do a data visualization software or a tool it's not only microsoft guys i'm talking it in a generic way whenever i take any data visualization software what they can do is guys they can convert the data whatever the raw data was there the raw data is going to be gets converted into a beautiful and simply understandable a visual context that means that data is going to be simply converted into some kind of a visual format it is going to converts why should i convert the data the raw data into visual context guys how to convert why should i convert into visual format because visually we can understand the story behind the data guys for example just i am not taking any complex data guys let us say this is month and let us say that there is a company for example take a company like dell so in each and every month of let us say 
how many laptops they sold in a particular month. So across the world or across a particular location. In January, let us say that they have sold 2,500. In the month of February, they have sold 1,846. In the month of March, let us say they have sold 3,240. 3, in the month of April, it is going to be what we can understand. So it is going to be, let us say, in the month of April, uh, let us say that they have sold, let us say, 4,524. And in the month of May, for example, they have sold, for example, let us say, for, uh, let us say, 2,000, uh, let us say, 2,000, for example, 500, something, or 2,540. In the month of June, let us say that they have sold, let us say, 2,050, they have sold. Something like that, the data was like this, guys. So, for example, just I'm, I'm not taking any complex data. So, which month, which month we are having the highest sales are there? So highest sales is going to be in the month of April or which month is having the least sales is going to be there. Let us say in the month of February. But being the data is a very small data set here, we have to read the data and we have to understand the data, guys. So instead of that one, if I plot the same data in a simple way like this, guys. So in the month of January, it is going to be like I'm putting in a like in a chart like this, guys. So it is going to be 2,500. It is going to be, let us say, 1846. It is going to be 3240 in the month of March. In the month of April, it is going to be 4524. According to that, only I'm drawing the picture, guys. And in the month of this one, it is going to be almost all same only, 2514. And here it is going to be 2050, guys. It is going to be 1800, right? Maybe 2050. Now, in this case, this is, I said that this is the month of Jan, in the month of Feb, in the month of March, in the month of April, in the month of uh, May, and it is the month of June. So if you observe carefully, in this case, in the second case, if you see the second picture, if you see, which month has having the highest sales, you need not to read the values, guys. Even I didn't given the values also. I didn't given any values here now. In January, how much sales was done? Just I'm representing the data in a visual format. So which month is having the highest sales? Which month is having the least sales? By looking at that, we can identify that. So it is going to be the April and least is going to be in the month of February. So see there, I, though the values was not given, easily we can understand the data. But here, we have to read all these values and we have to do that. So why should I convert the data into visual context is nothing but for easy interpretation or easy understanding the data, guys. So easy understanding. Why should you understand the data, guys? Whenever you want to take some kind of a business decisions. So whenever the business management or the business uh, leaders want to take some kind of a business decisions, they want to have some kind of a support from the data. So earlier, earlier days means whenever the computer age was not there, they used to take some kind of a business decision with the help of some strategies. Okay, but they will go wrong or sometimes they will go correctly. But this time, but after this computer era has started, guys, so every business people, there are completely depending on the, so they want to take some decision. But to support that particular decision, we require some kind of an information for us. So that information is going to be nothing but this is going to be like, for example, the company want to give a discounts. The company wants to give some discount. So discount means simply which period they have to give the discount. Okay, so let us say that just I'm telling about in a simplest way here now. So during the March, so why the sales has been increased in the month, the month of March and the April, guys? Generally, your academic year will end on March and the April. So people start learning some languages. People start going for the various courses. So once their academic is over, once their bachelors are completed, so they will come into, which is going to be the, uh, let us say the job related trainings and all these things. They will buy the laptops. In the month of February, sales is less. Why? Because during that month, so it is going to be almost all February means it is almost all at the end of the academic year. So the people will start preparing for their final exams and their particular semester exams. So during that time, the sales will be very less, guys. So something like that. So let us give the discount. So to improve the sales in that. So what shall I do? So shall I give a discount in the month of April? In the month of April, anyhow, the sales will be heavy. So because the people will have a huge demand for that. So not only for that. So how the, the company has to manufacture. So it is going to be huge demand may come in the month of April. According to that, our production also has to be increased. Otherwise, what will happen? The, the people will go to the other competitors. So if the company is not having a proper strategy, 
So what will happen, guys? Every month we are selling only, we are manufacturing only 2,000. Let us say that only 2,500 only we can able to sell it. But once it comes to the March, a huge demand was there. So 3,240. If I sell, if I only manufacture only 2,500 laptops. So remaining, what about the remaining people? So they will go to our competitors. So that's why increase the productivity. So whenever they want to take any any business planning or business strategies or whatever extensions or whatever they want to do, they want some kind of end which is going to be support for that. That's why generally these systems, what we generally call them as the decision support systems, what generally we call it as guys. So to support our business decision, decision support systems, we require something guys. It may be a data or it may be a story or it may be a visual, whatever it may be guys. So converting our raw formatted data into a visual format, converting our raw formatted data into a visual format, is nothing but what the skill, what we call it as an a data visualization skill. So what is a data visualization? Convert the raw data into visual format, which helps the business leaders and business people to take some kind of a business decision to support their decisions. Why? Why we have to increase the productivity in this month? Because in this month, we have this particular huge demand will be there. This is a sales. So that is the one. So in the month of February, we have a less sales will be there. So less productivity, decrease it. We don't require that much huge demand will not be there. So decrease that. So like this, this is the way how basically the business decisions can be taken, guys. So data visualization is a skill, guys. Don't say that it is a technology. It is a skill what we are going to be using that. Now, coming to the data visualization, how can you do the data visualization, guys? The data visualization can be done. And one more reason also, guys. Okay, I'll come back to that. How to do the data visualization, guys? Data visualization can be done in two ways. Generally, most of the people does not tell you this concept, guys. Because I was into the data science. I'll use this, uh, all my data science expertise and all these things also. I'll apply this in the Power BI, guys. You know that, right? Data, what is data science? You may be heard about what is data science, data analytics, AI, ML, uh, deep learning, NLP. Nowadays, they are talking about generative AI. So all these skills, I'm going to use it here, guys. My, all my expertise, I'm almost all having 20 plus years of experience, guys. So I have seen the industry from the last 20 years. What are the changes that has came? So all that particular expertise, I'm going to just deliver in this particular training program, guys. So data visualization can be done in two ways, guys. Generally, nobody will explain this. Because I was an expertise in both this particular way. So I'm able to do that. I, I was able to explain that in the complete clear way. Data visualization can be done in two ways, guys. One is by using coding. That means you can write some code. You can write some coding. Coding means you know that, right? We have to write a, like a program kind of a thing. We have to write it. So whenever you want to go for by coding, we have to know some language. So what languages can be used, guys? The popular languages which can be used for data visualization. Anyone, guys, any idea? How can you do that data visualization by using coding, by using any language we have to do that? Which languages uh, we uh, can use in? Python, Pandas. Yes, Python. yes, yes, absolutely, guys. Python, uh, we have a language <laughs> called as, any other languages, guys, which you are aware about? R. R, R absolutely, guys. Python and R, these are going to be some of the languages. I don't say only these two, but these two are going to be some of the languages which we can use it for data visualization. So what are the main, uh, I don't say that there are the disadvantages, guys, but I can say what is the limits? What is the limitations for these guys? So anyone from your side, guys, um, if you want to go for a coding, what are the basic limitations we have it, guys? For example, if somebody wants to uh, do the data visualization by using the coding. So what are the basic, uh, don't say drawbacks, we don't say disadvantages or drawbacks, what we'll say that. What are the main limitations we'll have in guys? Yes, absolutely, guys. Anyone? We can uh, write a large of, uh, set of codes mm -hmm. to uh, convert data into visualization. Okay, absolutely. So what are the problems you are going to face then? What are the main issues you are going to face there? Obviously, see, whenever you want to write by using a Python or R, the first point is, obviously, you need to be an expertise in Python, right? Is I'm correct? So yes. if you want to go for the, the if you want to go for a the coding base, 
So need some expertise. You need to be an expertise in that particular libraries. For example, Python. It is not a complex, but you need to be a little bit expertise on that. Need some expertise, guys. And also, being it is a coding based, automatically it is going to consume. What about the time, guys? Will it be more time or less time it will take it? Uh, more con more time. It consumes, it is going to be more time. Even if you are very highly experienced also, at least for writing the code, maybe you don't need to debug it and all these things. Even if you are highly experienced also, so you have to spend some time on that. So consumes more time and which is going to be need some kind of an expertise is required. This is what are the mainly the uh, issues or which we can say drawbacks or don't say drawbacks, everyone uses because in our data science program, we completely depend only on coding only because we are expertised in that. We are expertised in the coding. We are expertised in that particular and we, we like to use that one only. What is the reason also? I'll tell you later. The second one is going to be nothing but it is going to be by GUI. GUI is nothing but what we call it as graphical user interface. So what is this graphical user interface, guys? The graphical user interface is going to be nothing but uh, the graphical user interface is going to be nothing but what we are going to call it as, guys. Simply, it is going to be nothing but what we can say. Uh, simply, what we can say is, um, uh, uh, it's going to be nothing but what we can say is, simple drag and drop, guys. Simple, which is going to be drag and drop. That means you need not to write any code for that. Simple drag and drop is going to be the simple advantage, guys. Simple with your mouse, we can drag and drop it, guys. Okay, so what are the examples of GUI based guys? GUI based examples are going to be, we are having some popular tools like Power BI. Any other tools guys? Uh, Tableau. Yes, absolutely. It is going to be Tableau or we are having something called as an ClickSense. There are so many tools are there guys. So reporting visualization tools are going to be, we are having so many are going to be there what we can have it guys. So Power BI, Tableau or ClickSense, these are going to be some of the what we can say that about this particular tools, guys. So what are the advantages with this? So what are the main advantages for these guys? These are a simple drag and drop operations. So whenever I said simple drag and drop operations, what is the main advantages for these guys? So do you, I don't say that you need some expertise, but I'm not saying that without having any expertise, we can do that. At least some basic some basic ideas must be there, guys. You need not to be that much highly expertised for that. Just like what is data, what is CSV file, what is visualization. Without knowing how to use a computer, you cannot learn this one, guys. At least some basic. So this is a computer. This is a CSV file. This is an extension. So this is XLSX file. This is how the data comes. So we don't say that. So we don't really require much expertise. So expertise is not mandatory, guys. So we don't require any expertise. So expertise is going to be, that means any pre prerequisites, better say that. I don't say that expertise. It is going to be no need of any prerequisites, guys. No need of any which is going to be prerequisites. But if you have a little bit knowledge about some basic uh, programmatical skills and etc., so we can understand them in a very easy way, guys. No need of any prerequisites. And second thing is going to be, being it is a simple drag and drop, what we can do is, guys, it is going to take, say, consumes very less time, guys. Less time means it is not that much difference is there, guys. If you are really expertised in Python, if you are not expertised in Python, it may take a little bit of time. So just I'll compare it, we'll tell you, guys. Maybe it will take five minutes to perform a simple visualization I'm talking about. This will take less than two minutes of time. Just an example, there is not that much difference. It won't take hours of time. Hours of time does not come to which is going to be just a few minutes of time. So it is going to be just maybe comparatively five minutes it will take. Within less than two minutes only we can do. So half of the time will be saved for you guys. Half of the time you can save it. So when it comes to any complex visualization, then we can compare it guys. Clearly we can compare it. So this is the way, the way which we can do that. I'll show you both of them guys. I'll show you both of them. So learning Power BI mean, so don't nowadays companies are also, they're completely, that's, they completely changed their strategies, guys. The earlier case, earlier some years before, so a person who we are hiring a Power BI developer means you should know only about Power BI. You should know only about Power BI. Remaining things I don't require. But nowadays companies are not like that, guys. Because technology has been changed. 
the technology has been changing guys so nowadays some of the common skills everybody should learn whether you are a power bi whether you are into java whether you want to learn into other things does not matter so along with power bi some other the, the, some other things also guys in and around power bi what is happening there you need not to be an expertise on that guys at least you should have a a little bit a minimal knowledge is going to be required guys at least minimal knowledge okay so like for example nowadays you know that guys mainly for power bi what is the main important source important source is going to be nothing but obviously everyone knows that so for data visualization what is the main important source guys anyone uh, raw data data so obviously data data raw data whatever you call it as so now the data so data is required first of all now the data is residing in in the earlier case in earlier days it is going to be something like we used to call it as csv files excel sheets etc but nowadays this particular data storages has become a very huge guys so mainly we have to know about something about generally what will comes guys popularly which we are nowadays we are using database database obviously database are also very old systems mainly uh, we are data using warehouse. Uh, data warehouse on all these things okay fine where where you are storing this most much majority of them are getting stored on the cloud 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 so at least we should know about what is a cloud storage is even you are not expertise on that at least we should know a little bit minimum knowledge of cloud a little bit minimal knowledge of what is data warehousing what is business intelligence a little bit of sql is going to be required what are the other tools that are happening there so in and around just no need to completely you have to extend your uh, whatever the skill sets here but in and around power bi what are the other things that are working which closely related to them you need not to go to some other integration power bi integration with some other tool you need not to go up to that particular level but in and around which closely works with them so companies are also looking for the candidates who are having so if you don't have any idea about cloud tomorrow suddenly the client says that we are moving the data from my database system to the cloud then again, we have to run. So where is the how to know the what is cloud and how to work with them? That at least you should know the knowledge. Then you can export, you can explore them, or we can just uh, later we can explore and all these things. What we can do that. So that's why we should know about guys. So because I was um, generally um, not only Power BI. So I am saying that just not only concentrate on Power BI. Just try to understand. What are the different uh, the tools that are going to be which are con which are something related relevant to the Power BI applications? Okay, so advantage of coding based is going to, uh, some limitations of coding based is nothing but consumes more time and requires some kind of an expertise is required. Everybody cannot do that, but Power BI is not like that, guys. I'll show you also. I'll show you um, even though it is not related to our implementation coding. I'll show you guys difference between coding and GUI based. I'll show you the difference, guys. So coming to the prerequisites, no prerequisites are required for uh, um, GUI based uh, tools like Power BI Tableau. Just if you have a little bit idea about what is data, okay, uh, why do you require a data visualization? If you have a basic ideas, we can learn the things and consumes very less time also, guys. I'll show you also some practical uh, scenario like how a coding based is taking the time and how much it is going to be, how we are able to do it in GUI based. Same report I'll create it. In both the both the cases and i'll show you the examples here guys okay so coming to that so we added one extra point there yes power bi is a microsoft data visualization tool but i'm adding one new point guys it is a microsoft gui based data visualization tool guys that means without having any prerequisites without having any prior knowledge of any tools or anything you can directly start learning power bi guys that's the reason why everyone was able to learn power bi and nowadays, guys, data visualization has become a common skill, guys. It's a common skill. Everyone, independent of whether you work with C, C++, Java, .NET, whatever you learn, whatever we have, whatever you are learning, it is going to be a common skill, guys. Because everywhere the data was there, guys. So don't think that um, uh, everyone who wants to uh, become an expertise in data visualization, they will learn. At least we all of you know that guys in Excel sheets. See how the Excel has been got powered in the, from the last years guys. It is slowly, it is initially we don't have them guys. But later onwards in Excel sheets itself, so many people, uh, even there are going to be non-IT professionals, 
they will create a visuals in the Excel sheet, guys. In Excel itself, we can do most of the visualization can be done in Excel sheets only, guys. So even there are not visual, there are not uh, data visualization experts. Even some people who are not a data visualization experts also, guys, they can just do the data visualization with the help of the Excel sheets very easily. In Excel itself, a lot of visualizations are available, guys. We don't utilize that particular skill. That's it. We don't work with that particular visualization skills and all these things. We don't work with them, guys. So a lot of options we are going to be having, guys. A lot of which is going to be the visualizations we are going to be doing, guys. A lot of visualization we can do them. See there, these are all the visuals only, guys. So it is going to be what we can call it as pivot chart. This is going to be bar charts and all these things what we can do it, guys. So see there, these are going to be something called as a bar charts. Insert column chart or bar charts. Different type of charts what we have it, guys. Really, guys, in Excel, you can do a visualization which is better than, which is better than the, which is going to be the, uh, the Power BI we can do in, guys. But the only problem with this is going to be, we require some kind of a little bit expertise on that. I'll tell you the difference. I'll tell you the difference, guys. Okay. So what is going to be the visualizations in Power BI? The visualizations is going to be in the Excel. But Excel main, the main purpose is not for visualizations. The main purpose is to represent the data. It is having a technique to convert that particular data, guys. Okay. Now, let us see the history about this, guys. So, how this data visualization tools came into the picture? So, when they have came into the picture, why they have came, all these things also. Let us try to discuss about that. Because we are hearing about Power BI and Tableau, what we are discussing. Any other tools, guys? Uh, earlier, which is almost all somewhere around... Uh, the older one. Anybody having any heard about any other visualization tools, guys? Except the Power BI, Tableau, ClickSense. Anyone, guys? Heard about any old generation uh, previous reporting tools, guys? Anyone? No one, guys? Okay. Fine. Let us discuss about some history about this one, guys. It is also good to know about some history. For that, I'm not spending any much time, guys, because we are in the introduction classes. So in the first class itself, I don't want to start with implementation. So what is visualization, how it came into the picture, etc. guys. So I'll, I will divide this data visualization tools into three generation reporting tools, guys. First generation, second generation, and the third generation. Currently, we are in the third generation, guys. Currently, our generation of reporting tools is what we call it as the third generation reporting tools, what we call it as, guys. First generation reporting tools, guys, it is before the year 2000. Before the year 2000, guys, we used to use the tool called as, we used to use only one reporting tool, guys. That is nothing but what we used to call it as crystal reports. At that time, we used to use it, guys. Before 2000, it was used called as, which is nothing but what we call it as crystal reports is the, the type of the reporting tool what we used to use it, guys. Very limited features. A very, very limited features, guys. Okay, a very small size tool. So, which we use it, guys, with the very limitations only. Coming to the second generation reporting tools, guys. Coming to the second generation reporting tools that was started from year almost all 2001 to almost all up to 2012, guys. Almost all, we can say 2000 to 2012, guys. 2000 to 2012, it has been came. And why? That means what is the reason why a new generation tool has came? Because the old generation reporting tools, they are unable to handle the implementation, guys. So what happened in the early beginning of 2000 is they have introduced the concept of BI, the introduction of BI, guys. So BI has been started. That is nothing but business intelligence. Power BI, what is BI stands for? Business intelligence. So being the BI has came into the picture, the people started working on business intelligence systems, very having a large volumes of data, there are unable to be handled by the crystal reports. Because that architecture at that time it was developed, its architecture is different. This architecture is completely different, guys. That's why these crystal reports are unable to handle this kind of a business intelligence systems. Because business intelligence systems are like huge volumes of data, and more and more dynamic requirements are there. That's why they have got some kind of a new type of a systems called as, like a new type of reporting tools called as 
I think you may be here, I, mean, I don't know whether you have heard this about this guys, Cognos. Uh, we are having something called as a business objects. Okay. So Cognos was developed by a company called as Cognos, but now it was acquired by IBM. Now it was acquired by IBM, guys. IBM has acquired it, acquired by IBM. Now it is IBM Cognos. Even business objects also developed by a company called as business objects, but now it has been acquired by SAP. Now it is called as SAP BO and it is called as an IBM Cognos. And even from Microsoft also, guys, there is a tool called as Microsoft SSRS, what we used to call it as. So Microsoft is also having one earlier data visualization tool is there, guys. It is what we call it as SSRS is what we used to call it as. SQL Server Reporting Services. So whatever, whoever the current, whoever teaching the Power BI. So maybe I can say that when the Power BI started in 2013, almost all somewhere around some 10 years back. Or 11 years back but it has became popular almost all from 2017 only it was became popular guys earlier first five years it was not in demand after that from 2017 they added started adding some new features they have become popular now but before that it was not that much popular so the guys who has been it was introduced in 2005 year guys so being i was in the industry from the year 2001 i know about this tool i worked on it so I'll show you that particular tool also I'll show you guys. So what is the difference between Microsoft SSRS tool and what is going to be the Microsoft Power BI tool. But mainly these are designed for the supporting of the BI system they have been developed. That's why they comes under BI category guys. Cognos is a business intelligence tool. Business objects is a business intelligence tool. SSRS is also business intelligence tool. So when, when the third generation reporting tools has came, guys, almost all from the 2013 to whatever the current, whatever the current, what time is there, we are having the third generation reporting tools. Why? Again, same requirement, guys. Why they have developed it? Already Microsoft is having SSRS. Then why they came up with the Power BI? So Power BI is not the replacement of SSRS, guys. SSRS is also there. Power BI is also there. Both are available, guys. Both are available as of now. We can still work. As still, come some companies are using SSRS as a reporting tool, guys. So currently, um, currently I'm gen I'm delivering on training program at CGI. So I think you heard about this company, guys, CGI. So currently I'm delivering one training program where there are learning. I have to deliver the training on SSRS and they have to train on the Power BI. From the last four years, I'm delivering this particular training every year, guys. Every year I have to train them. So I was the trainer for them because they can't find a trainer who having experience on both SSRS and Power BI because SSRS is the old generation. It is there in around some 2005 to it is almost all up to 2012. It was there in the market. So finding a person who is having this SSRS and all, not only that, even I'm delivering the training on SSIS also. SSIS is an ETL tool and along with the SQL server also. Some SQL concepts also we have to teach. So complete suit, guys, complete end-to-end -end SQL Server, that is uh, database system, one SSIS ETL tool, one reporting tool called as SSRS, and one which is going to be uh, the Power BI also. There is a part of the training program. So coming to this one, why? What is the need of this one is mainly around 2012, guys, we have got the cloud computing. Cloud computing has become popular. So when the cloud computing has came, these systems, whatever the business intelligence systems are there, they are unable to start at supporting the cloud architectures. They used to do a lot of new things. They have to add up the things. That's why immediately Microsoft has came up with a new tool called as an Power BI. So what is the 2003 by the, uh, the third generation reporting tool has came, guys? It is due to the introduction of cloud storages. It is going to be introduction of the cloud storages, guys. Isn't it? So... What happened here is whenever the new technology has came or a new architectures has came. So what happened guys to support that particular new architecture instead of modifying the existing tools, generally it is going to be uh, what we can say that um, um, uh, what we can say that it is going to be they developed some kind of a new tools we have been got in guys. Mainly this third generation reporting tools mainly they have been designed to support the cloud storages guys mainly that is the advantage. 
I'll show you. SSRS does not support that much cloud storage. It supports hardly two, two, three only. They supports guys. Because at that time they're designing, there was a no cloud storage. In 2005, there is no cloud storage was there at that time, guys. So at that time they didn't thought about cloud storages. They supported. They started developing with the help of the BI architectures. But when the cloud storage has came, they are unable to be able to connect with the cloud. That's why we have got these particular tools like Power BI. So Power BI is from Microsoft, guys. Uh, we are having a Tableau was there. Uh, we have something called as an a uh, tableau we are having a click sense is going to be there so these are all going to be some of the the tools which we generally use it as part of the whatever the third generation reporting tools so we are learning as part of our training program guys we are going to learn power bi with a little bit uh, knowledge of ssrs also i'll give you i'll show you the architecture we can't spend more time on these guys so just maybe ssrs is hardly one day of time so I'll, I'll show you Power BI and after Power BI is almost all completed, how we have to do all the same features, functionalities in SSRS so that you can find the difference. Why Microsoft has came up with the new technology or a new tool compared with the SSRS. We'll understand the difference, guys. So their architectures are different. These architectures are different. Finally, the purpose is the same, but how they work and how these works is going to be completely different, guys. We'll see them later. We'll see about all those particular applications. So this is the uh, history, guys. Yeah. Sir, uh, sir. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, SSRS uh, is only work on the on uh, on prep data. On. Which data? Uh, SSRS problem? tools. Okay. SSRS tools mm -hmm. only uh, work on only uh, on premises data or cloud based. Cloud based supports, like, but supports supports, but a very limited number. Okay. okay, a very limited number. Okay, simple to say that micro they have supported they started supporting, but they are unable to at that same time. Nowadays you have a lot of cloud storage. Simple to say that Microsoft supports only Microsoft Cloud only, which is going to be nothing but Azure, right? Whereas right. Power BI will right. support not only working with Azure, but one thing, because this is from Microsoft, generally see, whenever Microsoft developed the Power BI, they don't prefer to use some other cloud storages. They also supports Azure, majority support for Azure, but not only with the Azure, they also supports AWS, they also supports uh, Google, which is going to be uh, the Google Cloud Storages, GCP, so all these are going to be nothing but what we are going to be get supported. Not only that, there are so many other cloud storages are also going to be supported. But this is having a very limited, that too, even Azure also, only two to three different type of sources only they can connect it. But Power BI can connect with majority of the Azure storages and not majority of AWS, but maximum AWS and which is going to be from the Google Cloud platforms also, they will support it. Got it? Okay. Scope is more. That's it. It is scope is very limited. That's it. Okay. okay. And sir, Power BI uh, and Tableau is also uh, connect from the big database. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. They can. They can connect it. Which type okay. of big databases you want to connect it? Uh, like uh, a big database, uh, like the data warehouse, Hadoop. Yes. Yes. Like they can Spark. connect it. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. They can connect it. Absolutely. Okay. They can connect it. So that is the main the thing that has been came into the picture. Okay, so that is the one main important thing that has been because see all these big data and all these things has came after the 2000 uh, at the time of 2012 or 2014 only they have came. Just for a quick for clarifying your question I'm showing you. See there, how many different type of sources your Power BI will support? Almost all 200 plus different type of data sources. Whereas in SSRS, it is 15. Just observe, completely find the difference. 15 and this is going to be 200, almost all. See there, it is going to be power platforms. Azure's are there. See how many different type of Azure systems that Microsoft is supporting. Power BI. Whereas if you go to SSRS, SSRS supports only one or two only. Maybe Azure SQL database it will support and one more is going to be analysis services it supports. It won't support the remaining things. But see them, these are going to support a lot of different type of systems are there. Azure HD Insights Spark, it is going to connect this. Not only that, there are so many different type of storages are there. 
see how many different type of online storages that are going to be getting supported okay so they can work with hdfs as you are talking about it is going to be hadoop which is going to be file hdfs they can connect it they can work with the spark they can work with the hive so many are there they can write some kind of an which is going to be so many different types of like search uh, search here now it is going to be amazon redshift is there they can work with amazon redshift even they can work with which is going to be google big queries they can work they can work with which is going to be uh, the which is going to be google sheets they can work google analytics they can work coming to amazon which is going to be we are having amazon redshift is going to be there but there are limited but coming to the microsoft if we talk about the microsoft cloud they will be supporting which is going to be most of the support is for azure what we can say that ssrs does not support that much almost all 200 plus different type of data sources guys whereas in ssrs it is hardly 15 60 not more than that so that is the difference between ssrs and this one what we can say that right okay thank you okay fine so that's it guys so the power bi whatever we are using currently whatever we are learning is the latest the third generation reporting tool which is almost all from the last 10 years it was there in the market from almost all from last seven eight years guys it is in the top position compare with the other tools what we can see the main advantage is guys you know that right microsoft products are very easy to learn low cost it is though there are low cost guys cost is low but even the productivity is very high guys if it is a low cost and low productivity companies won't use this but it is going to be low cost which is going to be high productivity that means we can perform all operation with a very higher level with the premium features we have it guys and depending on that we have to pay the features also guys if we want to pay get more features we have to pay more so limited if you want to get less features we are going to be having a uh, we, we can pay with a less or even you can use it at a free of cost also we can use it guys so that is with the low cost with the high productivity very simple to learn microsoft products are very simple to learn guys easy to learn and very easy to use guys so these are the some of the advantages which made the power bi which it is going to be put at the top place almost all the most competitors in the real world is going to be these two guys most of the competition is between power bi and the tableau so simple to say guys simple to say that i just in a simple way to make you understand guys it's a power bi is going to be nothing but like we can say that a power bi is going to be nothing but just like a it's a maruti suzuki uh, it's a maruti suzuki uh, cars guys so maruti suzuki cars we know that there are going to be low cost it's going to be compared with the other products it is going to be low cost whereas whenever we say it is going to be tableau there are going to be premium cars guys like it may be a bmw or it may be an audi or it can be some other it is going to be benz etc guys so it is going to be like a premium it's a tableau tableau is like a premium product guys it's going to be a premium product high cost it's very high cost guys only with a limited companies only the users power bi is going to be little bit lower cost so like as you know that right the indian according to the indian economy so we know that so how the companies will prefer to use it also always they will think about low costing but some european countries will be there guys their clients those companies they don't want to just they want to satisfy with the low they want to maintain some standards even it can be done also they will buy even they want to use it they can use it power bi but they want to go to which is a higher level so they want to show some premium uh, products they want to use it so like a premium cars it is going to be like that one and this is going to be like a mid-segment cars is nothing but like a power bi so that is the difference simple to make you understand guys low cost but high productivity simple to learn the what is going to be the this one guys it is going to be high cost tableau is very high cost guys high productivity is there but it little bit complex to learn also the environment is not that much easy to learn the tableau guys so that is the mainly the difference between them guys and mainly the one of the thing i want to discuss so what is generally we provide in our course curriculum uh, i'll tell you all these things in the tomorrow's class guys so the next class i'm going to discuss so two to three demo classes i'll take it guys so that you can understand the platform and all these things and after that we can start with our main course curriculum i can start with them guys okay so that's it guys that is for the today's class so we'll continue the discussion in the tomorrow's class also guys like uh, uh, what we offer what is our course content is there i'll share the course content details also completely end to end apart from that what we can what you can get from our side what we are expecting from your side if you want to become an expert what you have to do so all these things also i'll discuss about them 
the tomorrow's class and apart from that what are the different job opportunities what are the different job roles that requires this per data visualization skill so i'll tell you guys at what level at how much level you require them so all these things i'll discuss it in the tomorrow's class guys okay so just for today will i i'll end up my discussion guys i just want to take up some few questions also from your side if you have any questions guys feel free to discuss you can unmute yourself and you can speak or you can use the chat window also guys right Anyone, guys, any questions from your side if you have? Yes, guys, please. If you have any questions, don't hesitate, guys. You can just ask me. No questions? No questions, sir. Okay, fine. Okay, then. Uh, anyone, guys? Anyone? Just somebody is trying to speak. Yes, Sandeep? Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, the classes, right? So will it be at the same time? Uh, same for time. 45 days? No, no. Yeah, same time. Same time. There okay. is no changes because already I have a class at 7 to 8. My classes time won't be changed. We, we don't change the we do, we don't change the times at all. I don't change the time because I have my own other commitments. So this time is fixed. 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Anyhow, that also I'll tell you in the tomorrow's class also. So just for mm -hmm. a small timing, it is 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Every day, one hour class will be there, guys. And it is going to be six days a week. Six uh, Monday to Monday to Saturday. Monday to Saturday. Ah, okay. Okay. And uh, one more thing, sir. Last yeah. question, like yeah, uh, sure. uh, Power BI, because there are power apps which are coming up, right? The power mm -hmm. applications for the Microsoft. Mm -hmm. So, will there be any uh, thing that it is going to diminish because of the Microsoft Fabric which is coming in? Because they said that mm. somehow somewhere I read that okay, this Microsoft Fabric is going to uh, utilize all these power applications, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. But that is a different uh, scenario. Um, I can tell you that technically in the main classes, I'll tell you about that Power BI for Power Apps. Okay. So, and one more thing is going to be this, what the Microsoft has done is all these analytical tools they have got unto under, uh, unto, unto under you can say under one umbrella, saying that they are calling it as a Microsoft Fabric. So what is Microsoft okay. Fabric here now? It is going to be just which is going to be where they brought all the which is going to be under the which is all the analytical tools they brought into just one area they have brought it here. So generally as of now we don't have any such kind of a doubt regarding the Power BI uh, as of even Power Apps also they will integrate them see they will integrate with the Power BI but it does not make that Power BI is going to be completely it is diminishes but which is going to be part of the other, which is going to be maybe a part of a power apps or it may be part of a fabric. It will be there in somewhere in the other way it is going to be there. And obviously the demand is going to be, it may changes also, it, but it does not comes in the, in the coming one year, two years of time. Maybe as of now, as of my knowledge, at least it will take somewhere around 15 years. It will take for that. Um, maybe if another tool or another the things may come, then, then what will happen now? Microsoft comes with uh, some other tool. See, we have, a, we have this particular confusion from the last, at the time of beginning of computers only, we have this point. And every time they mm -hmm. are saying that if automation comes, we are going to lose the jobs. But is the jobs, we are losing the jobs there? When AI comes, AI comes, they are saying that we are going to lose the jobs. But not happening there. Technology is improving, new architectures, new technology is coming. So obviously, but one thing I can say is, we should not stop it that whenever we learn Power BI, we should not stop it Power BI. We have to just expand them. From there, we have to expand. What are the new areas are coming? Integration with AI. What are the integration with one? If obviously, if you always extend your skills, obviously there is no, there is no, there is no need of uh, any uh, doubt about this particular kind of a uh, that kind of a doubts. We need not have it because sure, twenty years sure, but sure. from last twenty years, you are hearing the same thing, right? Once computers comes, yeah. we are going to lose the jobs. What is happening? Manpower, manpower is decreasing, but the things are becoming easy, right? So, yeah. uh, obviously, that the things. So what will happen now? For example, if AA comes in coming future, we don't see. Nowadays, you you know that your bank's usage has been drastically decreased. Nobody is going to the bank at all. So, who yeah. will be affected there? <laughs> Isn't it? So, just uh, think like that. Um, the bank people. So, in coming days, we don't get the banks. Even we don't have a banks at all. All banks will be gets closed. That means they will operate online. There is nothing. Uh, they will work. Everything is an automated systems. How the chatbots has been came. So everything is now done with the help of the chatbots only. No, um, this particular, uh, uh, what we can say, uh, we don't require any customer cares. We don't require them. We don't have the customer care at all. Earlier it was there, yeah. but now it was not there at all like this. 
Uh, and last one question, sir. Like uh, uh, currently, I'm in Europe. Okay, 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 okay. So when you said about the tableau, which is being used in European continent, mm -hmm. right? So yes, true. I mean, like true. I see a lot of yes, yes, uh, opportunities are there for tableau here. Yes, yes. So absolutely. if I learn power, because a lot of requirement is there for power BI as well here. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, um, uh, considering the tableau as well. Mm -hmm. So if we uh, go through this power BI uh, mm -hmm. course, and is it good for me? Uh, I'm, I'm thinking about myself right now. Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so is it okay for me to go for tableau as well later on? Yes, absolutely. See, data visualization is a skill. That's it. Okay. The environment will be different, but the procedure is the same. The technologies are same. What is a bar chart? What is a stacked bar chart? Maybe the Tableau may give you a more and more extensibility they will give you, but better than that. So I've shown you, right? So 3D view, for example, in Power BI is a little bit difficult. In, in Tableau, it is going to be very easy. That means there is a built-in options will be there. But here we have to customize it. So if you want to get a premium look and if you want to get a premium product, then go for a Tableau. Otherwise, if you want to get, see, I want only data visualization. I want the story behind that. But I want to present in a very beautiful way with a lot of colors, with a lot of things means you have to spend more and more money. So I want to decorate, for example, something. I can decorate at 10,000. I can decorate at 1 lakh also. So if you have 1 lakh decoration, what will happen? More and more colors, more and more flowers. Okay, live flowers, it is going to be rare flowers will there. If you decorate at 10,000 10, means, you will have artificial flowers will come with a low cost. So that will have a good look, a, a good look and feel appearance. This is going to be so, but story is the same story. We want to get the data. That is only the thing is. So that's why, see, these companies are there. Some premium companies will be there. Even they, they can do the option with the help of that, with the help of Power BI, they want to show some difference. So we want yeah. always a premium product. So let us go for a tableau. Okay, so sure. these companies are there. So these companies, premium cars are there. So obviously you can see that every product is going to be different. Some, everything is premium inside that. Purpose is the same. For example, see the, um, the let us say the steering in a car. So in a Morty, seating purpose is same. In B, Audi also the premium is going to be the same. But difference is going to be the look and feel appearance, the touch and feel appearance will be different. That's it. So, yeah, yes, yes, sir. Fine, yeah. 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 Okay. So Europe means um, I think for you it is uh, it's a little bit uh, early morning, right? For you then? Yes, sir, because before this I have a class with uh, Vijay sir for the um, Python. Okay, yeah. it's still early. That is too, too early. Yeah, morning it's like you, at right? two. Th it's like two thirty in the morning. I have a class with uh, Vijay sir, and after that I have your class. Okay, okay, okay. fine. Yeah, now it's five thirty. Okay, so it's okay. fine. I mean, like yeah. I just want to do this. So that is the reason I'm. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. okay. Fine. Yeah. Okay, guys. Uh, thanks, all of you. Any more? Any questions, guys? Anyone? Uh, no, no questions as of now for yeah. me. Okay, then. So, thanks, all of you, for today, guys. Uh, tomorrow, we'll extend our discussion. So, I'll discuss a little bit more about my training program, what you will get, uh, all these things also, so that you'll get some clear understanding about the program also. And after that, I'll start with our implementation, guys. So, thanks for today, guys. So, tomorrow, we'll Thank meet you. at the same time with the same link, guys. Thanks, all of you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you guys.